Well, welcome to the channel viewers, Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist, <coughs> Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Um, this could um, relate to some people. I had a night last night where obviously we were working in Newcastle and we were in the breeze and I picked up a bit of a um, cold and what that did during the night was open up my mind a bit to how deep um, this breakup recovery really is and the ruminating that's still going on deep in the back of my mind from the conditioning and programming and sexual infusions and time that you spend together with your partner they get deep inside your mind and that's what love's about it's about the two becoming one um, and what we need to understand is everything's consequential doesn't matter what you do in a relationship it's all going to be consequential and that's why it's important to take these things so seriously Job chapter 13 verse 1 Job's in an argument um, he is in a bad way he's lost his family to a demonic attack where the buildings collapsed and his family and sons and daughters were killed he now has the people that are trying to help him but they just not don't seem to be helping him in the right way they got all the knowledge and information but it's not really helping Job says, Indeed my eyes have seen all this, all the stuff that you're saying, all the, they're talking about the birds having wisdom and the waters having wisdom. And <clears throat> my ears have heard and understood. What you know, I also know. Um, and this is a sign of, this can be a sign of insecurity, you know, when you're with somebody and they go, I really, really know that also be a sign of a know-it-all but I don't think Job, Job I think here is more in frustration I am not inferior to you yet I desire to speak to Almighty God and argue my case before him and this is a part a place that we all get to and have every right to get to the place where we need to sit down and have a serious one-on-one -on -one with God you're in your relationship and you're going along with the flow. There were aggravations in it. You didn't want them to be there, but there was nothing you could do about it because they were triangulated situations. These things arise all the time. You notice that in the back of your mind you are starting to get sore, dull. Unresolved's got a way of causing serious brain issues. Um, I can tell you from experience. And breakups have got a way of causing injury to your mind. And you want to be very careful how you go about your relationships. That's why it's important to maintain your relationships. It's very important. And today, this seems to be the thrust of all the undermining. I don't recommend dating sites. That's just my advice. Good luck to the people that are on them. I'm sure there's good people on them, but there's also predators and people that won't take responsibility and accountability and therefore won't grow. Um, but you need to know where your mind is and where it's headed this is the important thing you need to know when you break up that you're going to ruminate you're going to process ruminate, process, ruminate, process looking for answers could I have done this, could I have done that should I have done this, should I have done that what if this was different what about that Sometimes we just put ourselves in the wrong places, places where we shouldn't be, and the consequences of that are going through the processes of a breakup. A lot of people are medicated now. 
a lot of people are on alcohol now. They're drug dependent one way or another. Weed's a big one now that they're trying to legalise it across the world. A lot of people are happy about that. Um, cocaine and all those things are still around in the nightlife. Mm. No. In the long run, viewers, stay straight. Look after your mind and look after yourself. Life's too short. A lot of people say that they don't want to waste and that money's not important and all this. And it's all upside down. <clears throat> money is important it's like saying I'm going to cross the English Channel without a boat you're just not going to do it but the boat's important it's like saying I'm going to have a shower without soap the soap's important I'm going to eat my dinner without a knife and fork the knife and fork's impo important exercise is important And you've found yourself in a situation where the other person's not dealing with your progression or they're morphing into what they really were. I remember the last mar lady I was married to, she just took tablet after tablet after tablet after tablet. It was like being in a lolly shop, an adult lolly shop. Disguised, the chemist disguised as a lolly shop. And I couldn't work out what was going on. And then when it come down to standing for the marriage, no. No, that wasn't going to happen. So I had to leave that. There was no. I wasn't married to her and her children. I was married to her. And this is again a case of covert emotional incest. Same with the last one. She tried every way she could to work out a way of navigating it but it was never going to happen for her because she she was still in the covert emotional incest that was the point of it all whether she wanted to admit it or not doesn't matter covert emotional incest will not rest it will not tire it will not stop it demoralizes degrades it will pull you down completely psychologically and spiritually behind your back but you got to stand up and watch, just watch, and say, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper in Christ Jesus, my Lord. And you've got to stay strong. What happens to these people after you leave? What happens? Well, they just go back to what they were. They find somebody different. Hopefully life works out for them, but you've got to focus on what you've got to do. You've got to keep exercising, keep looking after your mind, work your way through sickness and illness, injuries. I got terrible injuries from that marriage, that woman's mind. She was such a disruption to my life. I look at it now and I just go, oh dear God, dear God, now... How could somebody change so quickly? It was like the wind. Horrible. Horrible. Horrible change. I ended up having a very serious accident because she deliberately messed up all our arrangements. I found myself in hospital in a pretty serious way when she come to the hospital I asked her why she buggered up the day so badly and she got the shits it was never going to work the children had too much control over her I shouldn't have got married to her she shouldn't have got married to me but I guess in some way we're all trying to find somebody that we can be with and have life with. The problem is I don't have trouble being on my own. And if somebody asks you if you're codependent, walk away from that person, because they'll be codependent on something or other, be it alcohol, drink, nicotine, weed, children, they'll be codependent somewhere. 
They don't have a clue what you've done in life, where you've been in life. They think they know everything, like what happened to Joe. Indeed, my eyes have seen all this. My ears have heard and understood. What you know, I also know. I am not inferior to you. But you can't put an old head on young shoulders. You can't put um, the knowledge that a person has at the age of 57 on it into a 25-year-old. They just haven't been through the carnage and the blessing and the journey. Yet I desire to speak to the Almighty and argue my case before God. Some of you are crippled with mind pain from relationship trouble and some of you carry physical injuries and ailments from that. Some of you are not going to walk away some of you are like a bird in a cage. You've just decided to sit on the perch and that's it. <clears throat> and you're comfortable with that. But you are being injured mentally and you are being possibly injured physically because mental injury always results in some kind of physical manifestation in your body. So that means you need to focus on yourself within the situation that you're in. Look after yourself. Do the right thing for yourself. Do the right thing by the other person as well. There's no need to cause trouble. Don't turn up pissed, stoned, completely medicated or drugged out. Be available. If they're not reciprocal, honestly guys, some people just don't want that next level whatever that level is I don't know what it is anymore <clears throat> you however smear with lies and this is what usually happens with interferers in a relationship they'll smear everything with lies you are all worthless physicians and there's a lot of people that run around thinking they're doctors, possibly myself. And we're, we could do better. We could do better. But I've got a funny feeling the people that I was involved with could have done a little bit better as well. And that's possibly the way you need to look at things. Stay positive. Stay as positive you can within the mental and physical injuries that you'll get. If only you remain silent, for that would be your wisdom. And that has a place. Silence does has a, have a place if you don't know enough about what you're talking about. But silence can also be used as a weapon, a horrible, vicious weapon that doesn't fix anything. Some people have gone through their marriages and life not having to fix anything. So they won't understand your read. And like water going back to its level, they'll go back to their level of person that they can cope with. That's the future for the person that you broke up with. That's what they do. That's where they belong. And we belong where we belong. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. Bye for now.